Hey guys, welcome to this video. In today's video, I'm going to show you a complete workflow from taking a Google AI Studio build project all the way to a production ready app. Now I do this because it's not really production ready. It's more just like MVP ready, but you could technically release this and start to get customers in. Now we're going to be doing everything as quickly and as easily as possible. So strap in and let's get into it. Now, just before we jump into things, guys, there's still a couple of spots for today and tomorrow with our free dev discovery calls. If you've got an MVP of a project that you want building or you want something automating in your business, or if you just want to chat about AI with me and my business partner, if you have a project or whatever, book a call. It'll be the first link in the description of this video. Now, one of the really cool things with what Google are currently doing is they're making everything multimodal, right? So you can actually build entire apps that does image gen, video gen, text gen, nano banana, scraping the internet, all of these different things with purely one AI, which is their Gen AI SDK. And it's proving to be very, very efficient for me, right? I'm absolutely loving working with this. Now, you guys know that I'm a big Anthropic fanboy. I love Claude. But one thing that Claude is lacking is this, this multi multimodal system. Let's just jump into creating something. So I'm going to click here on build. You want to be on build. Okay, so let's actually start a timer here. And we're just going to jump straight into this. Now, I'm going to be working on something that I've been working on for the last few days. It's going to be a nano banana powered app. I'm going to click a few more of these. So I'm going to click generate images with prompt. Sorry, I've got a bit of a cold, guys. I don't know what's going on. I just sometimes get sneezing fits. Okay, so let's say I want to make an app where I can upload an image. You take the image and you process it. Then you like take all the important parts from the image. For example, if it's 50 plus words, take like the five most important buzz words or the 10 words needed to make sense and recreate the image as a three, no, as an icon modern thumbnail asset. Not the thumbnail itself, but an asset in the thumbnail. Generate four different versions of it, uh, stick uh, using different styles. Okay, so we'll just press build here. And then this is literally the initial build. From here, obviously, we're going to have to be using something like Claude code. So we'll just cd dot here and we'll do mkd sas test uh, v9 because I've probably got loads of things called sas test. cd inside this file and we'll do Claude here. Now, obviously, we need a few parts to this. So um, we have the AI dashboard, which is what is currently being created. We'll probably need a date. Well, we will need a database. We'll need, so DB, and then this is dashboard. So I'll just write dash. And then we'll need auth and we'll need Stripe, basically. These are the kind of fundamentals to building a project. Now, normally I would try and use something like PSQL or whatever for database, but I'm actually going to use Superbase. The reason being is Superbase makes auth easier because you can use magic link from Superbase. And then Stripe as well. I'm going to be using the Stripe CLI to get things built in basically no time at all. Now, obviously, what we're going to be given here, just so you guys know, is pure front end. OK, so this is actually kind of useless. It's not useless, but it's it's not that useful, really, for what we want to create. Right. Because there is a lot of things missing from this project. Right. It doesn't even have a backend, for example. Let me just find the image I was using yesterday as a tester. OK, so this is the image. Hopefully it's just going to I'm not too bothered about the actual AI implementation here. This is almost the least important part of this. Uh, I'm kind of reluctant to even include this in the timer, to be honest with you, because this isn't what we're trying to do. I'm not trying to show you how to make an AI tool that works. I'm trying to show you how to launch one of these tools that you might make on Google. OK, so this is the result. It's not terrible. Actually, these are pretty decent. Like I could use these in uh, a thumbnail like this one, especially I could definitely use in a thumbnail. Also, this one, but it's it's not quite what I wanted. But I mean, just for now, just, you know, for the sake of this video, I'm just going to continue 
and maybe we can edit it in Claude code later. So from here, once you've got something that you like, you can press download app, and then you will obviously have to unzip that app, and then you can right click. I think you can copy here. I'm not sure about on um, on Mac. I'm on Mac, obviously. So let's CD into here. Let's see if that works. It does work. Perfect. Now we're going to write Claude here. And now we're inside that actual project, if that makes sense. So from here, the first thing we'll do is we'll just change the model to Sonic. I don't want to be lost in trying to get Haiku to work. And then let's just go back to our plan here. OK, so I'm, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, can you set up a super base environment with a locally running super base? to act as our database for this project. You will have to store people's image generation. Sorry if you can hear my cat, guys. And all, uh, they need user accounts and whether the account is paid, free, or canceling or canceled. OK, so I'm just going to keep you guys informed with what this is doing. So the first thing it does is Superbase init, which starts a Superbase project. Um, you will need the Superbase CLI. I've talked about this before, guys. I wouldn't bother with MCPs personally. I would instead start to use CLIs or terminal-based things, right? So this is what I'm doing here. It's actually using its own terminal commands. Also, another thing, guys, that I want to mention is if you want to, you should use subagents. So here in this first prompt, you want to say use a subagent for this. I don't think this is necessary for this project specifically because it's a very, very simple build and I should be done within one context window. We'll see about that. But I think for now, this is fine. I don't really have to use subagents for this, but I would probably recommend using a subagent for everything. So now we've got our initial schema here, as you can see. So there we go. Users create, can create their own image generation, et cetera, et cetera. OK, so that's actually fine for now. We're 10 minutes in. We should have a database already. Now I'm going to say, please add magic link. You can use a temporary local one for testing. Use .m variables to switch out later. Um, and give users a way to A, create an account, and B, sign in. This should be. In the header, please also do a very basic home page. I'm actually going to say, can you spin up sub agents to hurry this up? Please do things all at once, unless sequentially it's needed. OK, so now I'm going to say, get the project running so I can test. I'll just do this quickly, just as a quick test. I believe everything should be working perfectly, but. We shall see. OK, so this should work. This should be the magic link stuff done. That's annoying because I have another project running, but that's OK. OK, perfect. You can see that we're now logged in, right? And we have access to the system. The only thing that's missing now is Stripe. And we're only 16 minutes 30 in. I'm just going to say, OK, perfect. Can you stop whatever is running at local host 3000? get this project running on local host 3000. So let's do that very, very quickly. OK, so the project is now running on local host 3000, which is exactly what I wanted. I'm now going to say, please log in to the Stripe CLI and get a local web hook listener running. I can click the link and get you logged in. OK, so we allow access here. And now, as you can see, this will be logged in and it can kind of just start to code itself. OK, so we now have all this. These are all local reporting, uh, local stuff, guys, so don't worry too much about the API variables. I'm just going to say get my API variables as well, uh, get the test variables that are, it's possible to find for you. OK, so we can now see we have all of our variables in place. I'm now going to say, please make two prices and a token system for my project. The first price is free, the second is $29.99 a month. And that one, the free one, should get 50 images a month. And the other one should be 500. OK, and then finally, create a pricing slash subscription page, integrate Stripe checkout. 
or whatever is easiest. Um, add credit checking slash credit. Um, do webhooks and show the credits in the UI. So the really cool thing about this, guys, is it's actually using Stripe, uh, sorry, Superbase web, um, what they call it, Superbase edge functions. So it's not actually got a backend. This is something I was looking at just last night. I didn't actually want to do that in this video. Personally, I would have, you know, made a fast API backend or whatever. But this is actually pretty cool. It's using pure Stripe edge functions, sorry, Superbase edge functions to basically create the entire SaaS. Okay, so we can see that we now have magic link emails actually working, right? We have a credit system. Let's see what happens when I press upgrade to pro. So this still isn't working, unfortunately. I believe that there's an issue here. No checkout URL return from server. We'll just quickly send this error to Claude like this. Okay, so I just hit upgrade to pro here. I should just be able to do the test stripe settings. I don't know if this will work necessarily, like whether it will redirect with a paid account, but you can just see that in 52 minutes, we have almost completed the entirety of a SaaS MVP without any edits or anything like that. Like literally, I started this timer, you guys saw me start that timer, and I've created this entire project. Okay, so you can see it doesn't actually redirect with the correct plan. Um, it still thinks I'm a free plan. That's fine, it happens. So you can actually see that it did run. It's just for some reason there's a 404 here. So we'll just paste this here. Okay, I can see the issue here. It was listening to the wrong um, webhook. So we can easily just run this test again. So now it should be listening at the correct address. So it'll be pricing here, let's just do control over, there we go. That should be set up properly now. Normally I'd wait for for it to tell me that, but I have a feeling it's set up properly now, so we'll just have a look. There we go. AMH. There we go. Pay. And then this should bring us into a paid account. Okay, so this time we got a 401 error, so we'll paste the 401 error. Okay, perfect. And it took exactly one hour and six minutes to go from having an AI studio project to having basically what is now a completed project. Let's just test it out real quick. Uh, okay, and analyze and generate icons. Let's see if this works. Now, obviously, th this is missing one more thing, which is the whole launching the website. Just so you guys know, the way that I would now launch this website is I would say, use the Digital Ocean CLI to launch this website on digital ocean right and then it will literally do all that for me now i'm not sure if it has my dot m variable etc etc so i'm not sure if it's going to be able to do this this is also not really a part of this video i just wanted to show you these other parts but actually launching the website is probably one of the easier parts so look we have our entire system we have our icon generator i have 499 credits because i just used one credit to generate icons we have pricing. I'm now on the pro plan, as you can see. And I've just realized it's not saving generations, but this is something that I could very easily change just using um, Claude code. I can just say, can you just um, make sure that people's generations are stored and that they come, uh, that they appear underneath the upload and image option. I'm actually going to leave the video there, guys. Basically, all it has to do now is create a GitHub and then push that GitHub to DigitalOcean. That's actually a very, very easy part of this process. Oh my god, my head is just blowing. So I'm not going to go into too much detail in this video. If people want me to make that video as well, I'll do the same thing I made in this video, but with the launch as well. The launch, like I said, in my opinion, is the easy part. You can see it's just initializing a GitHub repo, then it pushes the GitHub repo to DigitalOcean, and then you're done. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you're watching all the way to the end of this video, you're an absolute legend, and I'll see you very, very soon with some more content. Peace out.